Hi, good morning. Um, you're here at the Washington National Zoo in Washington, D.C. And we have three pandas here. This panda down here just celebrated its third birthday. That's Ty Sean. That is our cub. Over here we have his mom and dad. Tin Tin is his dad. Tin Tin is 11 years old. Mei Jing is 10 years old and that's his mom. And they've been at the zoo now since about the year 2000 and they came from the breeding center in Wulong, China. This is Happy. He is 27 years old and he's lived here at the zoo for his um, entire life. Um, he's a West Nile hippo and he weighs about 5,500 pounds. These are our uh, Jeffrey's Tufted Ear Marmosets. Um, right now, I'm being watched by Bertha. She's our she's our female. She's bigger than uh, bigger than the male who has a name, uh, no name yet that we know of. Um, but they are they are closely related to the tamarins that you've seen already. And uh, um, the difference, the main difference between these guys and the tamarins is that they eat um, sap out of out of gum trees. So they'll dig it um, dig it bark with their teeth and then lick the sap up that comes out. Um, we actually feed her a special variant of, of a sap, um, and she really enjoys it. Um, I guess the male would too, but we don't know yet. So, um, But uh, we are hoping that these two will breed, and hopefully by uh, mid-February we'll have little baby marmosets to tell the world about. And the cool thing about black-footed ferrets is that at one point they actually thought they were extinct. So you shouldn't be seeing any live ones. But um, turns out that a farmer found some, brought it into the ranger station, and the ranger said, you know, where'd you get this? He said, oh, there's a whole bunch of them over there. They went and got that one family, took them in, they bred them in captivity, and now we actually have quite a large population. It's still very endangered, but no longer extinct. So, and the only thing they will eat, these guys here, eat those guys in their prairie dogs. That's like their main diet staple. And that was the problem, is that um, ranchers would try and kill these guys because they thought that they were making holes that their cattle could fall into, which from what I understand, it's never been proven that that's happened. But they do, what, what happens is, see he's a ferret, so he's a member of the weasel family and he's nocturnal. These guys are diurnal, so they're up all day and they go to they go to sleep at night in tunnels like this. And the ferret will go in, they're extremely agile, extreme, extremely quick. They'll sneak in, grab one, and go out. But you can see they're actually bigger and rounder than the predator. So they probably could, and they've got some pretty good claws. Although ferrets, you know, they're pretty the ferrets have some pretty strong jaws and stuff, and they're fast and nimble. But it mostly depends upon these guys being asleep. These are the naked mole rats. Actually, I think this may be the queen right here. The cool thing about naked mole rats is they're different from many other mammals. First thing you would notice about them, if you could feel them, is they're not warm-blooded. They are actually um, ectothermic. That means they need to get their heat sources from somewhere else. And the reason they can do that, in the wild, they live only in Africa, and they live underground where the temperature, it's an ambient temperature, keeps them warm. And then they also get their heat from piling up on top of each other when they sleep. They, they live in a colony, they're used social, just like bees and ants. You hear about their colonies. These guys have a colony, they have one queen. And what they do to eat, the plants grow down and the roots grow into their tunnels and they'll find a root growing and they'll start to eat. 
Well, they're really smart. Somehow or other, they figured out how much they can eat without killing off the plant. So they'll eat enough of the roots to exist, and then they leave it alone, and the plant continues to grow, and they can come back there and eat it later. The way you can spot the queen, and I don't see her right now, is she's one of the only mammals that actually grows after she's reached full maturity. When she gets pregnant, she can't afford to come out this way. So she has to actually elongate her spinal cord and her, her vertebrae stretch out just a little bit to make room for the babies. Because if she were stretched out, she'd get stuck in the tunnel. So she has to go this way. So she grows actually after she reaches maturity. Now any one of the females could be queen. It's mostly a matter of personality. They all have the same biological makeup. Um, the difference is that the queen gets up in the morning, she'll bite the others, she'll stomp on them, she'll keep them so nervous that they can't reproduce. The one who's sitting up in the hammock, she's going to have a baby sometime, very soon. Could be today, could be tomorrow or the next day.